I met Felipe in 1986. He and a group of students from Southern California met us, stormed the stage at the UC Berkeley um, National Chicano Student Conference. On that day, I was in charge of the event. I calmed everyone down. We discussed the issues. Felipe and his sidekick, Tomas, uh, both were very um, aggressive and challenging me in terms of what was going on. I was pretty ignorant of what was going on. So I took their advice. Over spring break, I did a lot of reading. Came back and agreed with them. In 1992, Felipe was very instrumental in getting me admitted into the law school as a transfer student. He would basically, every day, he told me just check and push and check and push as part of La Raza. So here's a little glimpse of Felipe at work. And uh, just know that he's not going to get four or five hour cross examinations unless he's doing a very thorough, informative, and not repetitive job. So keep that in mind when you take a little glimpse. Rest in peace, Felipe. Evidence on the car also suggests that the body didn't remain on the vehicle for an extended period. Of time. For four hours, the main investigator who handled a deadly crash was grilled. The case involves a driver who police say was under the influence and a victim who was also high on methamphetamine. The case today focused on intense questioning by an L.A.-based attorney representing Brockton Bakeman. The 29-year-old has a legal team of attorneys at his side, hoping the case will never make it to trial. Using toy cars, attorney Felipe Placencia questioned the lead investigator, who, despite the victim's drug levels, said the cause of the collision was Brockton Bakeman. Tuesday, he spent hours asking how he formulated the results of his collision analysis and pointing out other elements that could have altered the findings. And we don't know what occurred, correct? Just based off of the dynamics of the collision and the statements of Mr. McNeros. That is... That is let, let me finish. Placencia brought up countless hypothetical scenarios and possibilities that weren't explored. Among them, that Bakeman's altered speech was from a bad case of the flu and that he walked slow because of other pre-existing injuries. Placencia pointed to the dead victim, Joshua Whittington, and his state of mind during the crash. Mr. Whittington had drugs in his system at toxic, that's beyond toxic levels, correct? Yes. Yeah. So again, we established that we don't know if he crawled his way into the number one lane from either direction, correct? Correct. A preliminary hearing resumed today for Brockton Bakeman. He's accused of being under the influence of drugs when he struck and killed a pedestrian last year. His legal team is again scrutinizing and questioning every moment officers spent with him before he was arrested. Three hired defense attorneys are collaborating in the case against Brockton Bakeman. Defense attorney Felipe Placencia wasted no time attempting to show inadequacies in the police investigation. His line of questioning was technical, thorough, and at times scientific. If someone has concussions, a bad shoulder, arthritis, bad knees, lone disc, the flu, would that be a candidate to have him perform field sobriety tests? Depends. Depends. Placencia analyzed the contact officers had with Bakeman and even scrutinized the field sobriety tests. Bakeman told officers he had the flu and fell asleep in the back of a patrol car. Placencia also explored the potential his body was tolerant to the medication he was taking and not really impaired by it. Despite more than five hours of questioning, Officer Howard said his analysis remained the same. 